This is quite a discovery. Fragments of a biblical scroll, along with other relics, have been found in desert caves in Israel. The discovery of the Isaiah scroll in the Qumran caves is not just a monumental archaeological find. It offers profound insights into the nature of prophecy, the historical validation of sacred texts, and the divine mystery surrounding the life of Jesus Christ. Found in 1947, this ancient manuscript is part of the larger collection known as the Dead Sea Scrolls, which have reshaped our understanding of ancient Jewish history, religious practices, and scriptural traditions. The Isaiah Scroll, in particular, has captured the imagination of scholars and believers alike. Due to its striking preservation, its deep connection to the Hebrew Bible, and the incredible way it seems to forecast the life of Jesus. One of the key reasons the Isaiah Scroll is so highly regarded in both religious and academic circles is its age. Dated to the 2nd century BCE through radiocarbon analysis and paleographic examination, the scroll was written at least 200 years before the birth of Christ. This timing is crucial as it situates the text long before any historical knowledge of Jesus, thereby eliminating any possibility that the text was altered post-Christ to reflect Christian theology. What we are left with is a Jewish manuscript that has remained virtually unchanged since its inception, providing an unbroken link to ancient prophecies. The scroll is remarkable in its completeness. Unlike many other ancient documents, that have suffered the ravages of time, the Isaiah scroll is nearly intact, offering an almost word-for-word -word alignment with the modern text of Isaiah found in the Bible. This consistency has significant implications, especially for those who view Scripture as divinely inspired. It provides evidence that the words of Isaiah have been meticulously preserved through the centuries, suggesting a divine hand in safeguarding these texts for future generations. Perhaps the most compelling aspect of the Isaiah scroll is its detailed description of the suffering servant. In Isaiah 53, a passage that Christians have long interpreted as a prophecy of Jesus Christ's suffering and redemptive death. The chapter describes a figure who is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Isaiah 53.3 this servant is said to bear the iniquities of many and make an offering for sin, Isaiah 53, 10 to 11. For Christians, these words directly point to Jesus, who suffered and died on the cross to atone for humanity's sins. The uncanny accuracy of this description has led to a long-standing debate. How could a text written hundreds of years before Jesus so precisely predict his life and mission? Skeptics argue that the parallels between Isaiah 53 and the life of Christ are coincidental or the result of Christian interpolation into earlier Jewish texts. However, the discovery of the Isaiah scroll with its 2nd century BCE dating effectively silences such criticisms. The scroll predates Jesus by at least two centuries, meaning that its prophetic descriptions were not influenced by later Christian thought. This suggests that the alignment between Isaiah 53 and the life of Christ is not merely a coincidence, but a divine revelation. The fulfillment of these prophecies in the New Testament is seen as strong evidence of God's divine plan, unfolding over centuries. Isaiah 53.3 Rejected by His Own People Isaiah prophesies that the Messiah would be despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Isaiah 53.3 This sentiment is echoed in John 1.10-11, which states that although Jesus was in the world and made the world, the world did not recognize him. Furthermore, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. The fulfillment of this prophecy becomes apparent when we consider Jesus' ministry among his own people, particularly among the Jewish leaders, who rejected him as the Messiah. Despite the clear evidence of his miraculous works and the message of love and salvation he brought, many did not believe in him. 
This rejection can be seen not only in his crucifixion, where he was condemned by his own people, but also in the broader context of his life, where his teachings were met with hostility and skepticism. The rejection by his people serves as a powerful reminder for Christians that the message of God may not always be well received by the world. Jesus' experience of being despised and rejected highlights the cost of faith and devotion, where believers may face opposition and misunderstanding, much like their Savior. Isaiah 53, 5, The Suffering and Sacrifice Isaiah 53, 5 portrays the Messiah as one who was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. This imagery aligns directly with the crucifixion of Jesus, who was physically pierced by nails and a spear. In 1 Peter 2.24, the Apostle Peter reiterates this fulfillment, saying that he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. The physical and spiritual suffering of Jesus serves as the ultimate sacrifice for humanity's sins. His death on the cross is not merely a historical event, but a cosmic transaction where Jesus absorbs the sins of the world, offering reconciliation with God. For Christians, the fact that this prophecy was written centuries before Jesus' crucifixion demonstrates the foreknowledge and divine plan of God. Isaiah's depiction of the suffering servant highlights the profound theological concept of atonement, that Jesus' death was necessary to restore the broken relationship between God and humankind. His piercing and crushing was not only a physical reality, but also a representation of the immense spiritual burden he carried on behalf of humanity. Isaiah 53, 7, The Silent Sufferer. Isaiah 53, 7 describes the Messiah as being oppressed and afflicted, yet not opening his mouth, much like a lamb to the slaughter. This silence is poignantly reflected in the Gospels, particularly in Matthew 27, 12 to 14, where Jesus, despite facing accusations from the chief priests and elders, remained silent. Even when Pilate, the Roman governor, pressed him to respond, Jesus chose not to defend himself. This silence is not an act of weakness, but of immense strength and submission to God's will. In ancient times, a lamb's silence during its slaughter was seen as a sign of innocence and purity, and this symbolism is applied to Jesus as the Lamb of God. His silence represents his acceptance of the suffering he was about to endure, fully knowing that his death was part of a divine plan for the redemption of humanity. The power of Jesus' silence also reflects a deep trust in God's justice, knowing that he did not need to justify himself before his accusers. For Christians, this example serves as a reminder to trust in God's plan, even in times of great suffering or injustice, and to follow Jesus' example of humility and submission. Isaiah 53, 9 Burial with the rich Isaiah prophesies that the Messiah was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Isaiah 53, 9 This is fulfilled in Matthew 27, 57 to 60, where we read that Jesus, despite being crucified as a criminal, was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, a wealthy disciple. The prophecy captures the paradox of Jesus' life and death. Though he died a criminal's death, he was honored in his burial, laid in a rich man's tomb. This fulfillment not only reinforces the divine orchestration of events, but also symbolizes the unique nature of Jesus' mission. He was both a suffering servant and a king, humble in life, yet honored in death. The detail of his burial with the rich also foreshadows his resurrection, signifying that death could not hold him, and that even in death, Jesus' identity as the Son of God was affirmed. Isaiah 53, 12. Numbered with the transgressors. 
Isaiah 53.12 states that the Messiah poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. This is fulfilled in Luke 23.33, where Jesus is crucified between two criminals. His association with transgressors emphasizes his identification with sinful humanity. By dying alongside criminals, Jesus demonstrates the full extent of his mission to take on the sins of the world and offer salvation to all, regardless of their status or past sins. This imagery is deeply significant in Christian theology. Jesus, though sinless, is portrayed as fully identifying with humanity's brokenness. His death alongside sinners symbolizes his role as the ultimate intercessor and advocate, bridging the gap between God and humankind. By being numbered with the transgressors, Jesus offers hope to all who are lost, showing that his sacrifice was for everyone, no matter how far they had fallen. These prophecies, along with their fulfillment, serve as strong evidence for many believers who see Jesus' mission as divinely ordained, as foretold by the prophet Isaiah and affirmed through the accounts in the New Testament. The precision of these ancient predictions, written long before Jesus' arrival and their fulfillment in his life, provide a compelling case for the prophetic foundation of Christianity, highlighting the profound connection between the Old and New Testaments. Although the New Testament aligns closely with the prophecy found in Isaiah 53, it is essential to examine independent sources that support key aspects of Jesus' life. Historical attestations from non-Christian writers lend further credibility to the biblical narrative and early Christian claims of prophecy fulfillment. Let's get out of the circle and see if there are several non-Christian sources provide valuable references to Jesus Christ, helping to establish his presence as a historical figure and offering additional context to the events described in the Bible. Among these sources, two stand out as particularly important. The writings of Tacitus, a Roman historian, and Flavius Josephus, a Jewish historian. Both authors present independent attestations of Jesus' existence, and their works serve as critical sources for historians seeking to understand the early Christian movement from a non-Christian perspective. One significant reference comes from Tacitus, a Roman historian who, in his annals written around A.D. 116, mentions Christus, Christ, who suffered under Pontius Pilate during the reign of Emperor Tiberius. Tacitus's account is especially valuable because it is one of the earliest and most direct references to Jesus in Roman historical writing. His mention of Christ is brief, but it carries weight because Tacitus was known for his detailed and reliable accounts of Roman history. Tacitus describes the Christian movement as a mischievous superstition that arose in Judea and spread to Rome, where it became a significant societal concern. Tacitus's account indirectly confirms the New Testament timeline and the execution of Jesus. By referencing the fact that Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate, Tacitus aligns with the biblical narrative found in the Gospels. Furthermore, the historian's description of the spread of Christianity during the reign of Tiberius corresponds with the historical period in which the early Christian church began to flourish. Although Tacitus was not a supporter of Christianity, his writing provides an external validation of key elements of the Christian narrative, such as the crucifixion and the rapid growth of the faith. Tacitus's disdain for Christianity can also be viewed as an indicator of how the Roman elite perceived the new religious movement. The fact that he describes it as a mischievous superstition highlights the Roman attitude toward Christians, who were often viewed with suspicion, if not outright hostility. From a broader perspective, Tacitus's writings reflect the tensions between the Roman Empire and emerging religious movements that challenged traditional Roman religious practices. For Christians, however, Tacitus's acknowledgement of their founder and their movement's early development is invaluable as a form of historical corroboration. 
Another noteworthy source for the historical existence of Jesus is Flavius Josephus, a Jewish historian who wrote Antiquities of the Jews. Josephus lived during the first century AD and is one of the most prominent Jewish scholars from that time. His work provides a crucial perspective on the political and religious context of Judea during the Roman period. Within his Antiquities, Josephus refers to Jesus in two key passages. The more famous of these is known as the Testimonium Flavianum, in which Josephus mentions Jesus as a wise man, if it is lawful to call him a man at all. This passage describes Jesus as a teacher who performed wonderful works and gained a following among both Jews and Greeks. While the authenticity of the Testimonium Flavianum has been debated due to possible Christian interpolations, most scholars agree that the core of the passage is genuine. Josephus' reference to Jesus as the Christ confirms that the figure of Jesus was known outside Christian circles and had a reputation for wisdom and virtuousness. Importantly, Josephus does not depict Jesus as a prophet or messiah in the way Christians do, but his account acknowledges Jesus' influence, his following, and the circumstances surrounding his death. This non-Christian perspective helps to complement the biblical accounts by offering a historical witness from a Jewish standpoint. Josephus also makes another mention of Jesus in the context of the trial of James, the brother of Jesus. In this passage, Josephus describes James as the brother of Jesus who is called Christ. This brief mention further reinforces the historical existence of Jesus as it situates him within the broader context of Jewish leadership and the early Christian movement. It also implies that Jesus' followers continued to play a significant role in Jewish society after his death, a point corroborated by the growth of the early church as described in the New Testament. Taken together, the accounts of Tacitus and Josephus provide two independent, non-Christian sources that affirm the historical existence of Jesus and contribute to our understanding of the early Christian movement. Tacitus's Roman perspective underscores the political and social impact of Christianity on the Roman Empire, while Josephus's Jewish perspective offers insight into how Jesus was viewed within the Jewish community of the time. These writings serve as a bridge between the religious texts of Christianity and the secular histories of Rome and Judea, offering modern historians valuable evidence of Jesus' historical presence. Furthermore, the fact that both Tacitus and Josephus were not Christians themselves adds credibility to their accounts. Neither writer had a vested interest in promoting Christian beliefs, and their references to Jesus can be seen as neutral or even antagonistic. Tacitus's disdain for Christianity and Josephus's Jewish background ensure that their writings provide a more objective perspective on the figure of Jesus than the New Testament alone could offer. As we've delved into the profound connections between the ancient prophecies of Isaiah and the life of Jesus Christ, validated not only by biblical texts but also by external historical sources, it becomes evident how intricately prophecy and fulfillment are woven into the fabric of the Christian faith. These revelations deepen our understanding of the divine plan and reinforce the foundational belief in Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah. The alignment between prophecy and reality demonstrates the sovereign hand of God working across centuries to bring about His purpose in the life of Christ. Such insights challenge us to see beyond mere historical facts and encourage us to appreciate the spiritual dimensions of prophecy, which continue to inspire and shape the faith of millions. This journey through the prophecies may have stirred something within you, perhaps a deeper curiosity about the Christian faith or a longing for a more personal connection with God. If you feel moved by this exploration, I invite you to take a step forward today. The Christian walk is not just a path of knowledge, but one of faith and transformation. If you sense a calling in your heart to embrace this journey, consider joining me in this prayer of commitment, a heartfelt invitation 
to welcome Jesus Christ into your life. Lord Jesus, I come to you today seeking your truth and the peace you promise. I believe in your words, in your life, and in the sacrifice you made for me on the cross. I ask you to come into my heart, forgive my sins, and grant me the grace to follow you. Help me to live a life that reflects your love and mercy. Amen. If you've prayed this prayer, congratulations on taking this first step toward a new beginning in Christ. We encourage you to share your experience with us in the comments below, where we would love to celebrate this moment with you. We are also here to help you connect with a supportive community of believers who can walk alongside you as you grow in your faith and deepen your relationship with God. Embrace this new chapter with hope and expectancy, trusting that God will guide you every step of the way.